Just trying to chill out. <laughs> what's uh, what's what's doing? <laughs> well, we got a we got a bunch of ingredients inside, and well, can you make us something? I got a couple ideas. Wait, just give me give me a tick. I gotta finish my smoke. All right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, cooking in general should be uh, some, a pleasure, right? Something you do, something you have to do every single day of your life if you want to survive. So I looked in the fridge and I was given some guidance as to what has to go, what do you have a lot of. Uh, milk, you have about 20 gallons of that stuff, right? I can make a flan, I'm not gonna make a flan. I'm more of a savory guy. I'll leave the flan to my mother, but for now, we're gonna make a simple no-brainer. What are we doing? Cabbage, cabbage tortilla. Yeah. Without further ado, let's get to it. I found half and half, we're gonna use half and half. Uh, with six eggs, seven eggs, maybe we'll see how it volumes out. A uh, bunch of vegetables, some cheese, and, uh, and see how it goes. Th this one is, is a knife that I, Bought for your brother, it, and he saw, it's folded 67 times. Damascus steel. <laughs> so my uncle, All right. thank you so much for using up our milk and uh, ingredients that we have laying around. Oh, too. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> David, thanks for the support. Hey, no problem. Thanks for the t-shirts and thanks for you know the production and all that. Yeah, cool. All right, so can I start chopping? It started. Right. So uh, I look for color contrast in, in food as well, uh, not just because it looks pretty, right? Uh, food should be a work of art as well as nutritious. And with these, you can either keep the the seeds, or they, they really don't have that many seeds. Just rip them out with your hands, a little easier. And just do a julienne or a dice. These are uh, little peppers. There's different technical terms for whether it's uh, diced or chopped or julienne or chefinade or whatever fits the dishes. All right, so you get a little red in here. Yeah, yeah, so, so when I uh, determine the size of the chop, I you know, decide first what I'm going to cook, whether or not it's going to be a, a um, quick flash fry. If it's a quick flash fry, then uh, the smaller pieces are more appropriate. If it's gonna go in the oven for a long time, of course you want thicker pieces because it'll take longer to, to break down. The point is to not overcook the vegetables. Uh, that's the worst crime yeah, yeah. that against humanity that one can do is overcooking broccoli, for instance. No more than two minutes and 30 seconds parboiled, right? And then shock it in an ice bath. That stops the cooking process, right? That keeps it from overcooking. So at the end of that process, you have the perfectly cooked vegetable. And different vegetable thicknesses require different lengths of time. Again, are you uh, baking it in the oven? Are you going to uh, boil it in a pot of water? You have to think about this. Thing, right? And I remember having just terrible, terrible overcooked, like, I don't know, broccoli or spinach or anything that's boiled for 30 minutes, right? Just forgotten about, just abandoned in a pot. It's just, ugh. Sure, it's, it's fuel, it's sustenance, but you actually lose a lot of enzymes and a lot of the um, nutritional value when you overcook. That applies to the most ingredients. Yeah. All right, so that's that. A little garlic, let's get some garlic. Garlic's gonna be, yeah. garlic's gonna be a rough chop. You, I like to buy, actually my only cheat is that I like to buy pre-peeled garlic. It just saves a little bit of time. Let's see how easily the skin comes off, just make a pile. If a little skin stays on, that's fine. It's not gonna kill you, it's actually good for you. It creates roughage and uh, so yeah, garlic's pretty simple. Uh, just take, see how easily that uh, comes off? 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I was a Russian linguist, military intelligence in the army, but in, uh, yeah, if you look historically, they say that an army marches on its stomach, right? So food and nutrition is very important to keep the morale of the troops happy, right? The, the morale of those troops that are gonna win your battle in wars for you, so. Yes, cooking in the military has always been important. Uh, Bangkok, Thailand, just one of the most magnificent food oases in the world, right? And as a matter of fact, I do have some uh, wok videos, right, where I'm cooking some Thai, uh, some fried rice, uh, some, what is it, green curried vegetables, right, the Thai style, right, using the, um, the different types of uh, curries, curry pastes that they have. This is a turmeric root, right? Now you can fuss with it, you can take the skin off, why bother? Skin is actually good for you. So I'm just gonna take a, a grater and just grate the turmeric directly onto whatever it is so I can throw it into whatever pan. You, you can do this for an omelet in the morning if you're making it. It's just a healthy uh, ingredient boost. Uh, 101 of any kitchen uh, that you're gonna serve food to people. Think like a doctor, first do no harm. <laughs> and if you have a messy, dirty kitchen, you're gonna get somebody sick, right? And depending if you don't have to clean your hands or if you don't uh, clean the facilities and the, in the instruments. All right, so we got the cabbage, it's in a bowl. I just boiled some water. Now instead of parboiling it, I'm just gonna pour some water just to Soften it up, some boiling water over the uh, cabbage. Right. Just gonna tap it down a little bit. This will help soften the, you know, look, look at that, it has some carrots as well. Cabbage uh, has to be cooked. I mean, you can eat it raw. Uh, I love the kimchi form, uh, beautiful. The, what the Koreans have done with cabbage. Every culture has uh, cabbage as a staple their vegetable uh, diet because it's such a robust vegetable and grow in um, cold environments and uh, environments with poor soils. Uh, so yeah, cabbage. So I have a beer for my uncle. Oh, wonderful. You like the Modelo? I like Modelo, I sure guess do. guess what? The trick he taught me when I was a kid. That? <laughs> I take that trick with me everywhere I go. Now, let's do the filler custard part all right so you can start cracking some eggs now what i do with these eggshells what i'm going to suggest that you do rinse them out with water dry them out for like a day and then put them in the oven at 350 for like 20 minutes you dry them out and then get a spice grinder and grind these into a powder right okay that's your eggshell uh, supplement for your dog food actually. you know whisk it fairly uh robustly vigorously all right, and then here's when you're gonna start adding uh, your basic, what do you call it? Basic spices, you know? Salt, pepper, cayenne, right? The assumption is that you know how to boil water, right? And <laughs> know how to adjust salt levels. I do understand that there are some professional chefs out there that purposely do not put any salt in their food because they're so tired of customers complaining that it's too salty. It's not salty enough. They're like, you know what? Put whatever salt over you want. To me, a true master chef knows how to put the exact perfect amount of salt every time with every dish. And that just comes with experience, right? And they say that if you put too much salt, the chef must be in love. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little cholula, because why not, right? Just a bit, we're in San Antonio. All right, a little bit of cheese, I don't know. Just like a cup of cheese, shredded. You know what? Let's just dump all the vegetables in here, all right? Bam, that's right. Bam, look at that. Look at those colors, beautiful colors. This part could be substituted for cauliflower or potatoes or anything else, all right? Just dump in cabbage. Listen, I, I stopped going to restaurants, not to brag, right? And I'm, in all humility, right? I cannot find, rarely can I find a restaurant that cooks as good as I do at home, right? That's just a sad fact. 
Um, it's more expensive. It's a little unpleasant. I don't know. Waiters, waiters, you have to wait. You're not, you, you don't know exactly what you're getting. When I cook for other people, I want them whenever they take a bite. I want them to close their eyes and I want it to nourish their soul as well as their body, right? Take a bite, they say, this is so good. Wow, right? I seldom get that in restaurants anymore. Um, and as far as nutritional value, you, you, like, is a restaurant gonna shave the turmeric root directly into the thing? No, that they're not, right? Because most people find it yucky, most people, um, but it's healthier, it's, it's a hell of a lot healthier for you. Uh, slim pickings here in regards to the equipment. I mean, cast iron, I love cast iron. Uh, this is an electric stove, flat top, and I'm concerned about this beveled edge, right? I'm sure the whole thing will heat up, but it's one of those things to think about. A little corroded, but you have to season that. Seasoning is a whole nother video. All right, so gas is optimal, but we're gonna put that up to six. Because when you're doing a flambe, for instance, the flame is already there, right? Um, you tend to get a better feel for the heat when you have gas. Like the size of the flame and the type of pan you have, right? And you see the pan smoking, you can turn it down. Um, stainless steel gets a bad rap, right? Because people don't know how to use it, how to operate stainless steel. Stainless steel has to get to medium high where the water beads and little circles on it, like say you sprinkle a little water on it. If it fizzles, like, then it's not hot enough. You heat it up to the point where it, the water beads across the surface, then nothing will stick to it. Okay, yeah, what, exactly. How does that relate to uh, non-stick pans? The non-stick industry all came about because people don't know how to operate their kitchen equipment. Cast iron, stainless steel, if you know how to use them properly, that's all you need. Wow. Right? There's no leaching from stainless steel. There's a little bit of leaching from iron, but iron is actually good for you. You need a little bit of iron in your blood. Oh, okay. So, so that's, yeah, let's, let, let me get a smoke in outside real quick let's and then. Smoke break. Smoke break. Uh, I smoke cigars because it is the truest expression of uh, Native American spirituality. It helps you relax. It's a metaphor for life where you have a plant that comes out of the soil, right? Using the rays from the sun, grows uh, into this beautiful plant, and then humans with their hands, they take the leaves, they dry it, they ferment it, they roll it into this product, and then the human who consumes it lights a fire to purposely burn it, and that fire creates smoke and ash, right? At the end, we will all go to ashes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I like to use a combination of butter and oil Grapeseed is ideal for this, right? If it's very hot. Butter, just put the stick directly on there. Another thing I'm gonna do to this pan is uh, season it afterwards, which is a process of making cast iron uh, last longer and um, give it a non-stick uh, uh, layer. I'm gonna have to put it in the oven uh, 450 or 500 for like seven, eight minutes, right? I'm gonna leave this on there for like 10 minutes. And as it cooks through, I'm gonna check the consistency to see if it's even flippable. If it's not, I'll just finish it up. You can see the edges start to, start to firm up. Cast iron, another thing cast iron does is it heats evenly throughout the whole pan. And stainless steel pans heat evenly throughout the whole pan because why? Because they have a little slab of aluminum in between the two slabs of stainless steel. This is what it's all about. An expert in a beginner kitchen. All right, you want to flip it open while I, uh, a little heavy? All right, all right. Go, flip it. All right, we're gonna broil that. Seven minutes. 
means that it's wound by the motion of your hand. No, yeah. Tissot Swiss watch, sapphire crystal, so you can't scratch it. Caught my dad's eye. What? It's called the caveman <laughs> knife, oh right? God. Dude, it's sharp. It is sharp. So he doesn't let us put <laughs> any of his knives, but uh, we're gonna shave Andy today. <laughs> Yeah, I've been mm -hmm. really curious as to how this is going to taste. Watching this whole process, you come into my kitchen, you disrespect my things. No, I'm just kidding. Somebody has to clean. <laughs> I have to clean yeah. this kitchen. I wanted an expert like Andy to come into this beginner kitchen and to see what he can do with just regular ingredients. What did he make? The Texas tortilla. I'm excited to taste it. All right, the moment of truth. I love it. Mm -hmm. Nothing is overpowering. None of the ingredients, they mm -hmm. flow together. Oh. Grammy, yeah. come over here and try the, um, we're not recording, we're just eating. <laughs> the best critic in the world. It's burned and there's no flavor. What happened to your touch? <laughs> wow. <laughs> 23-year-aged uh, rum, the best rum in the Caribbean. It's like about 23. And to finish, this is a bone shaker, full body cast cigar. I believe it's 100% Nicaraguan puro. Keep cooking.